Hey everyone, this is a special edition of the Brain Software Podcast with Mike Mandel and I'm Chris Thompson. We usually record these well in advance, but this one is nearly real time because we want to talk to you about what's on everyone's mind, and that is COVID-19. So we're bringing you an extra special edition of the hypnotic crazy train to help you plow forward, even if you're stuck at home, and you probably are. So let's get right to it and have some fun and share some great ideas to stay mentally fit during tough times. Because it's important to remember that these are still days Days of of victory. victory. All right. (laughs) Um, So here we go, Mike. Let's do it. Yes, let's do it, my friend. I'm doing good. It's quite important people realize that we're doing this remotely. And because I stupidly got rid of my blue snowball microphone thinking I'd never need it because I couldn't conceive of when we would be doing a podcast remote from each other again. Um, the sound may not be 100%, but we'll we'll remedy that when I'm back at Hypno East and we're sorting all these things out post-isolation. Yeah, you, didn't even, so. you didn't even tell me you were getting rid of the pod, of the microphone, so I fired you, of course, but... Well, the good thing is I can get it back. Sebastian is the one who bought it. So there you go. Yeah, there you go. So, (laughs) all right, we're, we're going to get, this is going to be, you know, we're still going to have fun. Even in disastrous times, Mike and I are still fans of laughing. Let's have some fun, but let's have some serious content here. So where do you want to start, Mike? Well, you know, everybody's going through so much stress with this. And um, I thought you wanted to talk about some of our amazing solutions here. Yeah, uh, that's a really good point. So, and that was what prompted us to want to put out a podcast right now. We've noticed even ourselves, you and I, we know how to deal with this, but stress creeps up, anxiety creeps up specifically, right? Well, Worry. What about that stock portfolio? What about that job? In our case, which we'll come to in a moment, we had to cancel a couple of live events as did pretty much everyone in the world who's running live events. So they're yep. anxiety. Now, what's interesting, we just put out a product called the anxiety solution around early into the new year. It's a brand new product. People are loving it. And this is not a sales pitch because we're here to tell you that every single one of you can access that training for free. And the reason that you can do so is because it's part of the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy, which anyone can get a 30-day free trial to. So we want to make it clear. Normally, we wouldn't be here saying, hey, sign up for a free trial of something that you might not ever pay for down the road. But it's totally (laughs) okay. It's a tough time right now for everyone. And if you need to go through some training to help you deal with anxiety, we want you to have access to the anxiety solution. So sign up for the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy. It's a free 30-day trial. And if you can't continue, just make sure you remember to put your cancellation notice in before your build and you have a full month to be able to go through all of our training, including the anxiety solution. Now, if you want more details on it, I encourage you to go to this URL, mikemandelhypnosis.com forward slash anxiety hyphen solution. And if that's confusing, then just go to MikeMandelHypnosis.com and click on the products link and you'll find it on that page. Right, Mike? Well, Chris, I'm, a, I'm afraid to say it sounds like I'm growing up, but do you notice I gave you zero interruption during the URL? I noticed because of course, this being an audio podcast, what people don't know is I can still see you because we're using Zoom so that we can see each other. It helps us calibrate and make hilarious joke references to each other. But... Um, it's, it's nice to see, you know, it's, it's, speaking of which, it's nice to see people's faces. And I want to encourage all of you, before we get on to some of the other talking points, get on, even though you can't socialize with people physically, it doesn't stop you from having online meetings, from seeing people, from laughing. Even if you don't have a video solution, you can have phone calls. So do what you can. Now, let's go on to the next thing we wanted to talk about, which is I said we had to cancel a couple of live events. And Mike, that is unprecedented for us. We right, but we're handling this very fairly, though. We're not punishing course. anybody. Yeah, in, in fact, I'll talk about that in a second, but um, we've never had to cancel an event. We usually have uh, the experience of having our events sold out months in advance. And of course, with the growing 
anxiety in the world starting around January. It just was beginning. But into yeah. February, things were really, you know, it, it actually seemed weird. People were worried what's going to happen. And then even up to about, I would say, a week and a half ago, we didn't think we were going to have to cancel any events. And no, we were hanging in there. We were hanging on as long as we possibly could. It's interesting, though, Chris, how this is all sort of ballooned very quickly. You say January, but no, none of us were really tracking this. Until because, February. Well, yeah, but later in February. Very late. A month ago, because we recorded our last podcast on February 12th. And that was the what to do in disaster strikes. You mean the and one? Had, yeah, you're talking about the last not, one that was published. Number one, published, right? Was published on not, March 13th, but we recorded it about a month or earlier than that. And I think that was before I even heard of coronavirus. Totally, that's what I'm saying. It was completely before because one of our listeners in Louisiana said it totally freaked him out mm -hmm. that it was so appropriate that when it came on, Corona was just taking over and people. Oh, it was out. very weird, Mike. I flew to Florida in the early part of March when this was not even really on people's minds that much yet. And while I was in Florida, we published that episode because I had scheduled it in advance, published on the 13th. And it freaked me out because it was just so yeah. weird. Anyway, so that's, that's kind of cool. But we, we have never canceled an event. We had to cancel the April classes, which means We've bumped a lot of people. Well, we've either offered, we've offered people the choice. You can either have a refund, full refund, no administrative fee whatsoever. We would never do that to anyone. That would not be nope. fair. Or you can move to the June class or the October class that we're holding this year. And as far as we can tell, we are very much hoping that things will be back on track for June. So a lot of people are in that class. It's starting to fill up. And we wanted to mention on this podcast that if you're thinking that you'd like to do hypnosis training with Mike and I in Toronto, and you're still kind of feeling like, well, is June going to go ahead? Is the world going to all go to hell? It's not something you have to worry about because the way we handle things is very fair always. If you were to sign up for the June class and for any reason it has to be canceled due to this ongoing problem, you'd again have the opportunity to move to October or get a full refund with no fees whatsoever. So yeah, yeah. always feel comfortable that you can sign up for our class. We are not going to hold your money hostage if something bad happens. So MikeMandelHypnosis.com forward slash events is where to go to find out what's happening. And I've left well, on that page, I left the April class up, but said that it's postponed slash canceled because it's unfortunate, but we've never had to do it. And we want to make sure people know that we are going to take care of them. Yeah, and I'm hoping we never have to do it again. But on a more positive note, Chris, we I, we both got that nice email today from our friend Darren. Yes. And it was interesting because he put some pretty intriguing um, things in the email, that just the ways of looking at the situation now. But before we go to it, I want to pre-frame that with our think tank words because they're still coming in uh, regardless of the situation. Let's see how these... Okay, and out. I'm going to pre-frame that... With All the right. fact that the think tank words of the day are designed yeah. to help us reframe problems into opportunities and how to stay positive in these tough times. So that's what we're there, going to apply no these difference. words to now. <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, the first one is skylight. The okay. second is stitch. Stitch. The third, yeah, stitch. And the third is technician. technician. What do you get from skylight? Well, skylight, you know, when I used to live in actual Toronto, not Hypno East, we had skylights in the house. And I loved the fact that all this fresh air, fresh light, fresh air. No, that would be a leak. Fresh light? <laughs> you fresh light? Fresh light, light would come in. About? And in fact, as you know, my, the home studio here where I am in Hypno East, I just installed big LED lights in my ceiling and they look like skylights. They're so bright. It's insane. It's, so bright. It's like yeah. A, a skylight on an overcast day. And I love well, it's light. not like that, Chris. It's like a weapons grade laser. It's it so is amazing. Bright. Yeah. I am a, <laughs> yeah. It's it's very warm here all of a sudden. Even though LEDs are very thermally efficient. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so yes, skylight is about light, there, it's I'm about brightness, it's, it's about looking up and looking past the problem that oh, you're like all it. facing right now. That's what I'm thinking of. How about you? Oh, that makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. A skylight can bring uh, light into even dark and dingy rooms that have no other source of light. So Absolutely. finding ways to, again, finding ways to find light in the midst of this, 
finding things that are empowering and inspiring, mm-hmm. looking up instead of dwelling on what we'll get to this in a minute, dwelling in limitations. Yeah. Which is always a mistake. Now, what about stitch? Okay. The second word is stitch. So, oh, I love this one because to me, stitch is about connection. Stitching brings two things together or multiple things together. Fabric. What about people though? Can we use this bad situation as a way to connect with people that maybe we've lost touch with in some ways. I have a friend in San Francisco that I used, well, used to be, I'm still best friends with him, but I haven't seen him in a long time. And we're using this as an opportunity to share photos of each other's families and chat and catch up and discuss what's going on in our lives. Can we connect with people through these bad times? Of course. That's excellent. That's excellent. When I think stitch, I think of the Glasgow handshake, which is a headbutt. Ooh. And it's tradition to to say stitch this just before you headbutt the person. Are implying, you serious? Why you're going to need stitches across yeah, the bridge stitch of your nose? But so, right. stitch to me, I'm thinking of a stitch in time saves nine, and it's yeah. back to that being prepared, thinking ahead, making sensible moves now, so that you're not panicking at some future event. What about technician? Technician. So to me, technician is about a specific skill, building some sort of having, possessing some sort of specific skill so that you're able to overcome certain challenges or do something that you want to accomplish, whether you're- Right, a, because you know, everyone is a technician of some sort. Exactly. You know? and mm-hmm. How can you apply that? How can you use that skill for your own benefit and others? Yeah, so how can like we that. use this time perhaps to become a technician of something that we really ah. want to learn? even better. Mm -hmm. So let's look at Darren's email because I think this is, um, it's kind of interesting here. Yeah, I've got it up on my screen right now, Mike. So this is a great series of reframes, right? Yeah. Mindset shift during a pandemic from So Darren. Do you want to just explain to people who aren't necessarily familiar with hypnosis and NLP what a reframe is? Yes. A reframe is it puts, when you put a different frame around something, it changes the meaning. So you have the same content, but you're changing the meaning of what it is. For example, uh, the old NLP one was a woman saw the footprints of her family on the carpet and she was trying to vacuum them out all the time. And the therapist reframed it and said, it means you're not alone Mm -hmm. instead of the carpet's dirty, which is a powerful reframe. Well, reframes are empowering ways of looking at things. And the very first one shows this so perfectly. He sent us, it said, I'm stuck at home, okay? But the reframe is, I get to be safe in my home and spend time with my family. Now, that's kind of interesting. It, it's a reframe is also in the terms, I get to instead of I have to. Yeah. And it you takes know? away that stuck mentality, right? The, yeah, I'm, yeah. The, I'm stuck at home really resonates with me how we talk a lot about the word why versus the word how, for example. We yeah, want to get away yeah. from problem wise. Why is it? Why am I stuck at home instead of? The okay reason to use why is to to get an answer to a question like, why is the sky blue? That's all fine. Or why do you want to go outside right now and have some fun? That's all fine because you're talking about a target state, a place you want to be rather than a why question that keeps you locked into that stuck state mentality. Mm -hmm. I get to, I love that. I get to. So where are the I get to's in your own life? Right. Okay, let's do the uh, next one. I will... Get sick. So you say, I get to get sick. <laughs> yeah, I will. The next one is I will get sick. And this is really an anxiety, a worry about a future event that hasn't happened and may never. Well, of course, everyone's going to get sick at some point, various colds or whatever. You know, we all get sniffles, but people are specifically talking about COVID-19 here. I will get this virus. Okay, right. let's reframe that. I will self-isolate wash my hands, and significantly decrease my chances of getting sick. Now, that's what's in the email, but I'll add to that in addition. And I will take care of myself so that my immune system can fight off any kind of virus that infects my body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's right. Um, Even And some of the things, I don't think we have to go through this too much, but I want to get onto our list. But one of them that's really interesting here, the other one, Chris, that I really wanted to pursue in Darren's email, which I think is really key, is there is too much uncertainty right now. And the reframe is, well, I can't control the situation around me. I can control my actions, i.e. responses. Doing breath work, calling loved ones, getting enough sleep, proper nutrition, prayer, doing activities I love at home, 
all help during this time. So he's finding ways of bringing certainty in, things that you can be certain about, things that you can control when there is uncertainty. And again, yes. it's, so, it's just a wonderful reframe. Exactly. And I think I mentioned in the past, there is a former CEO of a company called Cisco Systems, a yeah, San Francisco-based company, and the CEO, John Chambers, who was the CEO for a long time, and he always started the quarterly calls for investors by talking about their results, framing around things that they can control versus things that they can't control. And in each of nice. those, it was things that are going well and things that are going not so well. So right. where we can all make our lives better is focusing on the things that we can control and of those, the things that are going poorly, right? That's we brilliant, can make Chris. Those and, and you're talking about Cisco, the plumbers of the internet, internet right? Yes, you got it. Yeah. I, I, did, I did three hypnosis shows for them years ago. Wow. They're, they're recruiting people into colleges. So they were good to me. It's interesting, though, because what can we control? As you know, Chris, um, I was on the road for well over 40 years, almost 45 years. Spent a lot of time in hotel rooms alone, and that was something I couldn't control. I was away from home. I was a homebody, hated being away from home. I'd get homesick. But what I could control was the environment in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. So I would always travel with books I wanted to read. Music. I would you now travel in the last few years with my music. Right. And I could control that environment and make it more homelike. So instead of seeing this as a time of being limited, what can you control? You know, a thing, I, and I heard on the news today, this is an interesting uh, reframe as well. They said, stop thinking about social distancing. Like, you know, you and I are practicing social distancing. We're, we're yeah. under lockdown in our own homes. You get out, you walk your dog, stinky winky. And I get out to the park and stuff. And I was in my car and, you, you know, they started saying, let's not call it social distancing. Let's call it physical distancing. Yes. And I think that's an important reframe. You want to comment on that? Yeah, it came from the health minister of Canada. In fact, in yesterday's live broadcast that they did on, we're recording this just so everyone knows, Monday, March 23rd, 2020. So I believe it was Sunday, the 22nd of March, and it was Canada's health minister. And she suggested, you know, maybe we shouldn't be calling it social distancing. We should call it physical distancing because that's what's recommended. You're not stopped in any way from socializing with loved ones, communicating with people, having a good time. You're just not supposed right. to physically get near them, right? Right. I think and one so of the problems, too, was people misunderstood. The, I agree with everything you said. And I think people misunderstood the whole idea of social distancing. Some people were interpreting it as, oh, I just hang out with my friends and that we just are keep our social group away from yeah. everyone else. And that's not the point. No, it's totally. Your friends could be carrying the virus. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you and I, well, first of all, I am in self-isolation for a 14-day period because we just got back from the United States. So the only thing that I am doing outside of my house is walking my dog when no one else is around. And thankfully in my neighborhood, there is no problem with that because it's very spread out. I will not come within 30 feet of another person. That's 100% safe. I don't have to touch elevator buttons or railings or anything like that. I yeah, can just yeah. go outside. It's all good. And I have a backyard, so that's all nice too. But everyone else in the bigger cities, they, you know, they're not necessarily paying close attention and they're still getting together in their close groups of circles. But then one person decides to go hang out with some other group and all of a sudden you're sharing the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I just saw a man at Wexford Park today. I was sitting there having a coffee and we stood 10 feet apart and talked in the rain. And nice guy, he lives in the area. And he told me he's got friends in Vancouver. And he said, the problem there is they're right near Stanley Park and they're in a high rise. Yeah. And he said, everybody goes down to the same park. He said, they're all jammed in close together. And he said, some of the people in the apartment are afraid to leave their apartment, even to get fresh air because they don't want to go in the elevator. You know, yeah, if you're on the 30th floor, it's you know, a challenge it's, you gotta for be sure. careful. People it have is. to be smart about this, right? And we're not going to get into all of the statistics and the epidemiology and all of that stuff we are not experts in, but let's just follow the advice of the experts who are telling us to not be in physical contact with other people. And in my case, it's just my family of four here. We're all self-isolating together, but we're not isolate. We're not contacting anyone else. So what can we do right. now that we are stuck with only each other? Well, no, it's not stuck. It's we get to spend time as a family, right? And right. I'll give you one you, example. You're written. You'd written, you didn't want to put any extra stress on your kids. And that's a thing for our listeners to keep in mind. Yeah, actually, let's talk about that point right now, because a lot of people are at home and perhaps 
some people are unfortunately out of work and it's a really stressful time to not know your employment situation. Some people are able to work from home because their companies have said, hey, we want to make sure that we're following these physical distancing criteria, work from home. And they're not used to the idea of their kids being home and their kids are not in school because, of course, the public school systems are closed for the time being. And parents are often concerned, well, are my kids going to miss out on their education? I need to make a schedule and make sure that they're doing schoolwork and chores and things like that. That's a mistake in my opinion. I saw some good commentary on this over the weekend where we have to keep first and foremost our kids' mental health in mind. And they are stressed because they don't get to see their friends. Then they're stressed because they see us as parents perhaps worrying about our economic situation Mm -hmm. And worrying what's going to happen, worrying about our kids, worrying about our, perhaps our older parents or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. If they see all that stress and on top of that, we're pushing them to do things that they're just not really in the mindset to do. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's the wrong idea. Let's at least give them some time to be kids. They can, you can encourage them to read and stuff like that, but let's not force a rigorous schedule down their throats. Right. You need to be doing this math and this science and this language and this writing and whatever else it is. Maybe they'll learn new things that are outside of school. Mike, you and I, of course, are huge fans. Even though we have very different educational backgrounds, we're both huge fans of self-learning, right? Yes, absolutely. What, well, yes. what are kids interested in? My daughter, who just turned 13 today. So happy birthday to her. She's really into baking and learning all kinds of cool things about baking. Now, it's not the healthiest stuff to eat, <laughs> but I'm very proud of watching her get creative and be independent and be able to follow a recipe and be able to clean up after herself and all these things that a few years ago she certainly couldn't do. She's learning. It's not school, but she's learning. And I encourage right. that. So, work with your kids, work together, do stuff that's fun. Um, totally not in the realm of learning, but just in the realm of having fun and being a family. I told the kids while we were away that when we got home, we were going to get a subscription to Disney Plus. It's in Canada, it's $9 a month. And it's like every single Disney piece of content that you could ever think of available. Right, right. Watched the movie Aladdin as a family together. The, the one with Will Smith, not the cartoon version. It yeah. was fantastic, Mike. Well, I, 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 such recommend a good job. You, I recommend you watch um, the Disney film, The Scarecrow of Romney Marsh, because you and I did the soundtrack once. Yeah, and all right. Commented. Yeah, yeah. Now, that, you know, like with me, Chris, it's all about staying sane in an uncertain yeah. time. And one thing Heather did the other night, uh, we, you know, we've only had Netflix for a month, and we're careful what we watch. We don't, you know, just watch all the time. But um, one of the things I liked was Mindhunter, which your wife recommended. We really yes. enjoyed the series. Um, the other thing was, I said to her last night or two nights ago, the problem was because everybody's home at the same time, the internet is very slow, even though we're on cable uh, for watching movies. It's constantly rebuffering at night. Interesting. So I've heard a lot of people talking about how that might be a problem. I have not observed yeah. it myself. And to me, I just think of it like, Every day is a weekend now or a Saturday morning. Right. I well, I just remember when I was a kid, I used to watch cartoons, right? And we didn't, right. have a, um, we didn't have a problem. It wasn't streamed. It was broadcast back in the old school right. days. But, but then there were commercials. So this is just the time it would be commercials. But Heather said, yeah. she wanted to watch a video instead with our new Blu-ray player. And I said, what do you want to watch? And she said, The Lord of the Rings, which is three, three films, right? So we started two nights ago. That's our escape. Four hours every night we go to Middle Earth. So wow. we've got one to go tonight, and that's a very powerful, powerful set of films. Yep. So with me, music, too, is a huge thing for staying sane. I, I engineer very carefully my musical environment. When I awoke this morning and it was pouring rain on top of the snowfall, yes, it's still snowing in the Great White North. Um, so all day long, Chris, I was careful to uh, listen to music that upholds me, music that lifts me up, because I'm very vulnerable to hearing sad music and getting dragged down. And This isn't the time I want to be doing that. No, this is not the time for depressing music recorded in minor keys. Yeah, this is AC D <laughs> on power fifths. Yeah. Well, especially D minor, which is the saddest of all keys, if you didn't know that. No, yeah. Oh. No. Which well, how about you know why Tata about Bell's Canon is a wedding song? <laughs> it's not a wedding song. And no. technically it's it's not even a canon. Technically it's um a Pasicalia, but I won't hold anyone to that. Interestingly though. Um, you talked about 
how we're both big on learning. And you know something that's really cool right now? I, I said, this is a great time to, we don't know how many weeks, months this is going to go on. This is a great time to take on that big book you put off reading. You know, oh, absolutely. The, the Odyssey or something or the Magus. Or this can be a time, the great course is one of our favorite favorite things. You know, you can do them all online and do a university or college level course in something. I think I'm going to do the archaeology one over the next few weeks, which I'm really interested in. So see this as a time you've been handed all this immense amount of time. Do something with it other than mope. Yep, absolutely. And that's why this is probably a really good time for anyone interested in hypnosis and personal development to start your trial to the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy. 30 days, you don't have to pay a penny until after that period is over and you can always cancel if it's not something that you want to pay for down the road. So there's tons of free stuff that you can do. Find what's and interesting make that, to you. Make that clear. When you said you don't have to pay until after your 30-day trial, you still get the 30-day trial free. It's not Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to pay anything. Yeah. If you cancel it before your trial ends, you don't pay right. us a dime. And that's totally fine. That's why it's there. It's risk-free. So let's talk, about, uh, videos. let's talk about a couple of other things here. So we talked about the importance of not adding stress to kids and all that. Let's talk about supporting people. Um, in my community, one of my neighbors started a Facebook group just for people in the neighborhood because they know that, for example, we're at home for 14 days, so we can't go to a grocery store. So the idea being, hey, how can we help each other? So if I need, for example, cream, we're running out of cream for our coffee. I can just put a little message in the group saying, hey, is anyone heading to the store? And if so, can you pick me up some cream? And I leave the money on the porch in an envelope. And my neighbor can just drop off the cream and take my money and we're good to go, right? Your mom, it's a nice way. Do you, give, do you give them a tip? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is a nice thing that everyone can do where you're going to communicate and actually engage with people maybe in your community that you had never really engaged with. Maybe you'll build some new relationships. So there's great. a great. That's fantastic. It would a great way, you know, get to know your neighbors better. You've now put it in my mind. I'm going to set up a little Facebook group just for our neighbors here. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, that thing, way you'll yeah, stop that, going that, to the store every day. Shut up. <laughs> I'm <laughs> kidding. Every time I just talk to Chris on our Boxer or Walkie Talkie app, app, I just say, I'm hey, just going out to buy more supplies. He say, stop shopping. Yeah, I'm and kidding. he's always joking. He's, he's never actually going out, but he's just saying it to me. Just to I'm going to go right off, after yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> here's, a, here's another thing right after this. Here's another thing in that the thing you said about keeping uh, tabs in your community and keeping in touch. We go, Heather and I go, as you know, to Lagie's, which is the North Indian restaurant near us. Fantastic. We go once a week. Well, they're not allowed to have sit down anymore. So all the chairs are on the tables upside down. Yeah. But they're still doing takeout. We phoned ahead and got takeout. And I'm saying, remember to patronize the small businesses near you that you still can. This is you know, the like thing. If, if it's a drugstore, go to the small drugstore near you. If, you. if there's something still open that you can't avail yourself of safely yeah. without you know, being too close contact with anyone, support the people near you so these businesses who, yeah, who will can survive. You help? Because if you can afford to help, and we understand not everybody can. If you've just lost your job and are worried about paying your rent or your mortgage, that's a very different scenario. But if you're in a situation where, let's say you're a teacher, you're not unemployed, you're still making the exact same salary, you're able to then go out and support some of these local businesses. And as an example, my local gym, which is completely shut down, there's probably a good risk of a lot of people canceling. I'm not going to cancel my membership because I want the gym to know that I still, I'm still there to support them. As soon as we're right, able to right. reopen for business, I'll be there. I'm not canceling. Some people will, and I don't want that to happen. But local restaurants, you know, they're taking a huge dive in revenue. Local, obviously, hotels, obviously, um, airlines, well, pretty much everything, so everything. many businesses, huge, huge, huge declines in revenue. So support those that you can, whether it be ordering takeout or delivery from local restaurants or, um, Geez, I mean, if you're, I, I feel bad also for a lot of the people who are doing a lot of phys, physical in-person training. If, let's say you're a, mas a massage therapist. That's going to be yeah. very difficult to generate an income when your clientele are worried about coming to your physical location. Maybe call yeah. your massage therapist. Ask, hey, how are you doing? How are things? Is there anything I can do? Maybe they'll offer you some sort of buy 10 
coupons for your next sessions at a discount, prepay for them. And mm-hmm. if you can afford to do that, that's a great way to help another small business maintain their cash flow. Yeah, I was thinking of getting a few root canal. Um, you, go. you know, Talk coupons dentist, for my Mike. dentist. So when he's open again, yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> kind of genius. That's all right. Brilliant. What else do, where else do you want to go through here? I want to make well, sure. staying in contact oh, with people is a huge one. The yeah. phone rang this morning and it was this lovely woman, Lynn from our little Presbyterian church. And Lynn is in her eighties. I think her husband is like 94 or something. He's a, a retired pharmacist and they're really sharp, really smart. And it was just nice. Like she just phoned to see how we are. And I had a good talk with her. And then Heather had a good talk with her. Maintaining human contact, not becoming freaking, you know, hermits in this, I think is really important. I think it's, it's too easy to be glued to the screen, just reading about the virus all the freaking time. Oh, Mike, I will confess right now to the Uh-oh. fact that, so obviously I said I went to Florida and then the SH beep hit the fan in terms of the virus spreading and the news and all that. So what do you think? We didn't go anywhere. We stayed at the rental house that my in-laws had in Florida. And we basically just hung out in the sun in the backyard and used the Wi-Fi to read about the news. (laughs) So yesterday, we're now home in our isolation period. And the Apple screen time report feature that ha- it happens at Sunday at 9, 19 a.m. For whatever reason, that's exactly the time I get it every week. And I'm on my mm-hmm. iPad and the screen time alert comes up and tells me that I have increased my screen time by 78%. <laughs> now, guess what I was doing most of that time? Reading about this freaking situation, right? And I'm not letting that happen anymore. And I'm just <laughs> laughing at you right now because Brett's been <laughs> editing this podcast for us overnight. And by yeah. the way, this is a global situation. Ross is editing this in the Philippines and they are under the same kind of lockdown as we are everywhere in the world. This is affecting everybody, right? So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky time, but now we're recording this. It's Monday morning. I am treating this like back to usual. I'm not in sweatpants and, a, and an old t-shirt. Right, I'm right. I'm wearing a nice pair of jeans. I've showered. I've shaved. I've already had my workout this morning and we're being productive. I want to get great quality work done. So well, let's, Chris, that, treat that, this like a normal work day. A normal work day. What can you do? Not what mm-hmm. you can't do. Just focus on your possibilities. I, I like the way you're treating it like a normal day. And, but again, we're always finding that balance. This is a great time to strengthen family relationships. And one of the things I think my wife and I are going to do is get back to playing board games. And we used to do this when we were at our cabin all the time. Yeah. Every afternoon before I would make this amazing meal, we'd sit looking at the lake and we'd play back to back a game of Scrabble and a game or two of backgammon, which can be extremely fast and brutal. And Scrabble. World class yeah. skill level that I have. Um, not so good at Scrabble because it just doesn't ca- hold my attention, although I'm a wordsmith. But um, yeah, families, board games. Remember when it, you're too young to remember this, man. But when I was growing up, the family would often get together for board games, Monopoly. And yeah, Chunkle I'm, I'm and not as young as, and, uh, as uh, <laughs> remember, I'm 45. I was, <laughs> no, that, that's pretty young as far as I'm Yeah, concerned. I know. But to a lot of the listeners, that's, uh, that's, I'm an old guy. But I remember yeah. playing all kinds of board games. And they're a wonderful way. We, in fact, in Florida, we played Scrabble and Yahtzee. Out in the oh, backyard. Yahtzee is fabulous. There's no board. It's dice, but it's a great game. Yeah. When, you know, when, when we were sitting there in a country that is not our own, worried that we can't go out to dinner, we can't go to a beach because in Florida, of course, during spring break, the beaches were going to be way too busy for people who weren't being smart. So we didn't really go anywhere other than bike rides in the neighborhood which was totally empty, it was fine. You could be very, very socially uh, isolated from others or di- physically isolated. Physically distanced. But, but yeah. no, nothing like no dinners out. We wanted to take the kids to a water park. Nope, not doing that. We were going to go to a spring training baseball game. Not doing that. In fact, the league completely canceled. They did the responsible thing. And by the way, I want to mention, the bi- support the businesses that are doing things right. Because when all this ah. blows over, there are going to be businesses that have tarnished their brands because they were greedy and were worried about themselves. And then there are going to be mm. the businesses that you remember that did the right thing. Like these, no, baseball tickets, these baseball tickets, the league canceled every game 
And my in-laws had bought the tickets, probably spent over, I'm guessing over $200 for six tickets. And all of that money is automatically getting refunded to their credit card. Nobody has to make a phone call. Nobody has to do anything. It's just nice. They just streamline the process to right. make it easy. That's when I had. I want to give a shout out to Air Canada. When I had to cancel my trip to San Diego for a marketing conference that I would normally be going to in one week, that got canceled. And when I clicked the link to cancel my Air Canada ticket, full refund. It's going to take like three weeks to get my money back, but I'm not concerned. I understand that every business is going through a tough time and is overwhelmed with problems. Hotels, same thing. But you know what? Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, one sporting event, my kids are competitive dancers and it's dance com competition season right now. And when the dance competitions get canceled, then they have to decide, are they giving the money back or are they saying no refunds? Well, I know of at least one dance competition um, company that is not issuing refunds. They've rescheduled the conference, the competition for two months later. And if you can't make it, too bad. Well, guess what? In a family like ours, that's about $700 of admission fees. Yeah. That they're just if we can't go, we'll lose, right? These are businesses mm -hmm. that are going to destroy their reputation. So they're being the short ones that are doing things the right way. They're being short sighted for sure. And, and how give your kudos, daughters like rather than rather than going on social media and giving negative shout outs to the, the problem yeah, companies. Go for the positives. Let's go and say nice things about those companies that are doing things right. Shout out to them. Let them know you appreciate that they're treating people properly. Well, I was going to ask you, that's brilliant, Chris. I was going to ask you how your two lovely daughters, Drella and Psychomantia, are dealing with the lack yeah. of dance, but I won't. I won't. Yeah, you know no, what? Listen. Actually, I'm, I'm sitting here in the home studio in the basement, and I'm hearing loud sounds from upstairs because I know they're practicing dance upstairs in the kitchen. And I think it's wonderful. They're actually doing really well. They're so disappointed at their activities being essentially canceled forever in their eyes, right? But Right, I, right. Everything's going to get better. Okay, where else do you want to go from here? Well, we're, we've got to be quick because yeah. um, I don't know how long my AirPods are going to last. But let's say get it, get outdoors if you can. There's Absolutely. something about getting outdoors, even if the weather's bad. Get outdoors and go for a freaking walk. It, yeah. I found it really. I've done it every day. I will again today. I did it every day for the last few days, and uh, once with my wife, once by myself. Did like a 50 minute power walk. And just getting out in the park with nobody around me or getting down to the lake or something, nobody around Lake Ontario, it has a wonderful effect. And plus the walking helps you burn off some cortisol, get outside so you don't feel like you're stuck in a freaking cell. Yeah. And here's another one. You are, if you're at home and you're not going out to, to restaurants and stuff like that, this is a great time to throw away your old crappy eating habits. Learn how to oh, make nice, nutritious nice. food for yourself. Spend the time with your family assembling healthy meals, which really means not a lot of added sugars and vegetable oils and processed junk. Make food out of real ingredients. Learn how to eat healthy. This is going to help your immune system. I don't want to sit here and make some claim that if you eat healthy, you won't get COVID-19. No, of course. We don't know what you the got stats it. show, but we are yeah. intelligent people who are reasonably certain that if you treat your body with respect, your immune system will have a better chance. Not a perfect you know, chance. Take care of my body. Chance. My body takes care of me. You know what it needs, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Let's, let's look at this. Another important point here, Chris, is be altruistic. In other words, who can I help? Yeah, we just talked about that. To, Where were you? But, but, but making that a specific focus for this reason. Yes. When we focus on ourselves entirely, we can get stuck in this dungeon of despair. Yeah. When we intentionally focus on others, involvement with others and helping them instead of ourselves, it's very powerful. It's the intention. It's, it's making a point of making this happening. Uh, making this happen. I remember in a Charlie Brown Christmas, Charlie Brown was depressed and he said he always got depressed at Christmas time. And uh, Lucy said to him, what you need is involvement. He got involved with other people. And, and that's it. Who can you connect with who doesn't often hear from you? What can you do to make a difference for someone else, even if you're stuck at home? Mm -hmm. Like the stuff you can intentionally change. Yeah.
that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's funny. I was looking at the notes, <laughs> trying to think of what's the next point, And I thought you were going to keep going for a few more no. seconds. Uh, this is so hilarious. Positive. Doing these remote podcasts is going to be, uh-huh. there's moments of awkward silence. There's, yeah, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Chris, you know what? We, we've been going a while here. Why don't you go to the empowering questions? All right. And this really, hopefully, this whole podcast is a series of empowering questions for you. And in fact, before I even get to that empowering question, I want to give you another empowering project. This is something I was just thinking about in the background as you were talking. Uh-oh. But when people are talking to you, because this is a time of stress and anxiety for a lot of people, people are going to naturally get into a complaining state of mind. They're going to talk about their problems. And my challenge for you, the empowering challenge is what can you ask people? What kind of empowering questions can you deliver to those people who are in a negative frame of mind to help get them moving, to help them drive the hypnotic crazy train forward. Bound out, bound out, bound out. There we go. All right. And here's your empowering question. Ask yourself, how will I make the most of a bad situation and even become stronger and more resourceful from this experience? So what opportunities does this situation afford and what will I do today to make the most of them? Fabulous, Chris. And I have a very brief metaphor for everyone, which I'm calling keep calm and carry on. We've all seen the signs. I mean, it was very, very British. And all through the war, it was keep calm and carry on. Notice they didn't say don't panic. Keep calm and carry on. My mom and dad lived through the Manchester Blitz, which was started in 1940. The Germans sent many, many air raids. They wound up sending V-1 rockets. And my mom and dad still had to go to work you know, every day, even though they'd spent the evening in an air raid shelter. And my mom said they got so tired, they didn't even want to get up when they heard the air raid siren go off. You just want to die in your own bed. And my mom was almost killed by a German plane, machine gunning civilians in the street, Manchester High Street. She was yanked into a doorway by someone. Then a couple of Spitfires went up, shut it down. And I always think, Chris, no matter how bad things get, I'm not living through a freaking war. I don't have bombs falling in my house. And there's some people who may be listening around the world that that isn't the case, but if they can go through that and mm-hmm. four or five years of World War II where the war came to them, I can go through this stupid virus thing with it being little more than an inconvenience. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Keep calm and carry on, folks. And so with that said, I think we can wrap up the very first special update edition of the Brain uh, Software yeah. podcast recorded March 23rd, 2020. And uh, we will, well, you'll see our next podcast come out, which is episode 146. It's already been recorded and edited and has nothing to do with COVID-19 whatsoever. But yeah. we might jump in and do a few more of these. If, if the response is strong, let us know. Email us, info at MikeMandelHypnosis.com. That email address goes to both of us, Mike, you and I. We both read those emails. And of course, you can reach out to us individually using either Chris at or Mike at if you just want to email one of us. And if you need any help with anything that is not related to us directly, but support related, email support at MikeMandelHypnosis.com. We encourage you to sign up for the MMHA, our online hypnosis training, which is at MikeMandelHypnosis.com. You'll find it right there on the homepage. The free trial gives you free access for 30 days to everything in our academy, which includes the anxiety solution that I mentioned earlier. No obligation to continue paying once your trial ends. You can always cancel it before it ends and take this time to learn some new tools to de-anxiety your own life, if that's even a word. So with that said, <laughs> and so in any closing conclusion, remarks, let me, yeah, Robert De Niro, as unlicensed heating engineer Harry Tuttle in the film Brazil said, we're all in this together, kid. I love it. Okay, thanks everybody. And good, good night. night. <laughs>